Yeah. Misa walk into the forest. <laughs> wow, Tim's bits, Jar Jar Binks. That was gangster. How about Misa suicide? Mm. Misa Saboku. Hey guys, and then welcome to episode 40 of the Up Real Late podcast. My name is Scott Ellis, joined here by Tim McGavick. What up? Feeling yeah, really, here. really good today. Yeah. Oh yeah, pumped for this one. Nice. Also here is Tyler Switalski. Pretty hungover right now, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> really? Yeah, late night. It was his birthday. Your birthday yesterday. Birthday beats. Rocking that post-birthday hangover. Nice. Yeah. Also here is Adam Franey. Sup? Get hype, boys. This is going to be a good one. It's going to get hardcore this episode. Oh, Henry. Oh, <laughs> oh hungry. Let's just run down some of the topics we're going to discuss on this week's episode. As usual, we're going to discuss our last seen movies, and we're also going to do our review of the week, and that is Hardcore Henry this week, so get excited for that later, and also we're going to talk some news. Biggest one being the Rogue One trailer. Let's not, let's not beat around the bush here. Uh, well, let's keep it real. Also some Kingsman uh, news. Yeah. <laughs> A couple other trailers, including Swiss Army Man and BFG. From Disney, of course. Disney's BFG. Disney's BFG. Disney's um, Rogue One. Right. Disney's um, Swiss Army Man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I doubt it. Disney's Not Kingsman. so much. If you guys do want to skip ahead to any of those topics that I just mentioned, you can click in the description box below and uh, click on any of the timestamps, and you can skip ahead. And uh, also, if you do like our videos, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, so, with that, that out of the way, let's... Uh, who wants to start us off? I'll go. With our last scenes. Tim. Tim will go. Classic. Tim will go. Speaking of Disney. Uh-oh. Oh. Uh-oh. I watched the Disney classic that I've never seen before. The 1953 Peter Pan. Wow. What? what? Written by eight people. <laughs> wow. Which I will not read off. Peter Pan. And Please based don't. on the play by J.M. Barry. Right. Directed by Clyde Geronimi, Wilford Jackson, and Hamilton Lusky. A lot of people. A lot of hands. Greased this wheel. A lot of, a lot of uh, chefs in the kitchen. Jesus a lot of chefs in the kitchen. <laughs> so, Peter Pan whisks away the three darling children, Wendy, John, and Michael, to Neverland. Once they arrive, they're met with pirates in the devious Captain Hook. Oh. How have you not seen this? I've never seen this movie. Crazy. You ever seen this as a kid? I was hanging with my girlfriend all weekend, and I had to do my last scene. And I was going to watch something else while she slept, but she ended up not napping, so I watched the movie with her. Of course, she chose Peter Pan. She wanted to see a Disney movie that I haven't seen, so it's either this, Mulan. You haven't seen Mulan? Wow. Wonder Woman, Dumbo. I haven't seen Dumbo either. That was depressing. Or Pinocchio. I haven't seen Pinocchio either. Wow. What? You barely lived. I know. Pinocchio is like dark. So I chose Peter Pan, because it's like Robin Hood, which is my favorite Disney, the cartoon Fox movie, Robin Hood. You do love cartoon foxes. I do. Oh, they, they, they both have a green outfit. They both I was green just outfits. thinking that. That's <laughs> literally <laughs> it. <laughs> so, you guys have all seen this? Yeah. Yeah. How well do you remember this? How well do you remember this? It's it? been a long time. Pretty well. Do you I, Last do time you I watched it was this? probably VHS. Wow. Do you guys rem- remember this being super racist? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Horribly racist. <laughs> what? What? Um, no. Well, there's a song Walt Disney called What Makes the Red Man Red. Oh my god, you're right. <laughs> Where Indian people referred to as Indians instead of Aboriginals, sing a right. song about why their skin is red. The color of their skin is literally red in this... Literally red? Li- it's like red. <laughs> so they all have, like, they all look the same. They all have, have like, beak-type noses with, like, black hair covering their eyes. <laughs> You're right! What? <laughs> oh. So what you just grew, grew up thinking that was normal? The Lost Boys <laughs> in Peter Pan are running around in circles going... For they like do. ten minutes at a time, I'm just like, oh my god, this would not fly. So I'm gonna say like Walt Disney was evil kind of thing. Like there's those conspiracy. No, it's yeah. a conspiracy. He was he was he was, he was fired at Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say this is probably of the time, but apparently this got a lot of flack at the time as well. For being pretty <laughs> racist. You were like twenty at the time. I was twenty. So I missed remember? this one when I was growing up. <laughs> Somehow um, I missed this big release. <laughs> it was weird. I mean. Tiger Lily got played by a white woman this year in Pan. Or last year, I guess. Yeah. So I don't know which one's more racist. I'm going to go with (laughs) the red skin people. Which they call red skin. They call it red skin. 
engines. Like Washington. Rad men. Oh actually, it brings me back to, to uh, Pocahontas, actually. I was, I was just thinking about that. And they, they, they have the Savages song. Yeah. Remember they're talking about the Indians? Uh, they're savages. barely even human. Yeah. Like, <laughs> savages also gets mentioned in this. Yeah. Um, really? Like the Revenant. So, so it kind of took you out of it. It took me out of it completely. <laughs> it's like, I was just like, like, I can't get past that. so much racism. I'm going with like a heavy two on this, probably. Ooh, um, it just hasn't aged well at all. Savage. I think if I saw this when I was a kid, I probably would have loved it. Um, is it was it like a big name cast? No, at all. No, it was just unknown. It's pretty right? small. Yeah. they didn't do that um, in the nineties or whenever. This no, was. it was mostly just by like the nineties, like the people who the doing. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. The people who did the voices here were like radio stars and stuff. The like people who were used to doing voice work. Shit, eh? Um, Walt Disney apparently didn't like the final product. He thought Peter Pan came off as very unlikable and cold. Not racist enough. Which is what people yeah. are said is... Which other people who, like, love the play said they like that part because apparently Peter Pan's a bit of, a, like, a sociopath in the play. Like, he, like, yeah. murders people and shit. Yeah, like, I if kids want to grow up, he, like, kills them apparently and shit. <laughs> from what I've heard. What? That's fucked. So what do you think about Peter Pan? Well, uh, well, you know what? You need to kill more Jews. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, Walt Disney for you. Sad. Yeah, classic Disney. That's that's intense. Yeah. So heavy too. Heavy too. I much Ruthless. prefer Hook, which I did see as a kid. Yes. And I love. For some reason, when you said Hook, I thought of Pan, and I was like, Tim, no, 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 <laughs> no. don't say that. No, Hook's really good. With Robin Williams, check it out. Love Hook. Yeah. Yeah. Dustin Hoffman, great, great. Well, I'm gonna jump in next uh, with my last scene. I guess I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm done. You were done. I was done. Jump off the plank, Scott. <laughs> Vampire housemates try to cope with the complexities of modern mm, life you son and show of a, a newly turned hipster some perks of being I was going to watch this. So was I. Don was, told me about this. What we'll we do in the shadows. Yeah. Shout out to Don from Dubé um, Hair, who cut cuts me, myself, and Tim's hair. Um, <laughs> Dave true. Also. He, you guys are getting recommendations from your barber. <laughs> he, rec- he recommended this <laughs> yeah. movie to me when I got my hair cut last week. And... I, I was like, you know cut. what, Don? I'll watch yeah. it for you. I got my hair cut the, the next day, and Dubay also brought it up to me. He's like, you gotta watch <laughs> this movie, it. man. Does he know you two know each other? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was pretty hilarious. Uh, I watched it. So, uh, directed by Taika Watiti and Jermaine, Jermaine Clement. Who, really? Yes. They both had directorial credits on it. Um, oh. Taika Watiti directing the upcoming Thor Ragnarok. Um, starring Jermaine Clement, Taika Waititi, Jonathan Brew, among other New Zealand actors. Um, this was pretty funny. I enjoyed this. Yeah. Everyone was, keeps telling me to watch it. It does seem like a very hidden like gem yeah. of a movie. Um, and it was, I don't know, I, I liked their interactions with each other and like how they, you know, tried to deal with modern life. And it was just, it was shot in such a like, I don't know. It was like a documentary style, and so it was almost like The Office, where like they have their like confessionals, like talking to the camera, like a mockumentary. Yeah, and so. it made for some pretty funny moments. I actually really liked um, Ben Francham, who played this character named Peter, who's like this like eight thousand year old like Nosferatu like style, <laughs> like vampire who like lives in the basement, and it's like, you made for some. He had some funny moments for sure, and. Uh, Taika Waititi plays, like, an 18th century, like, nobleman. He's in it? Yeah. That's he's the director, like the right? Lead, yeah. Oh, he's the lead? Like, he stars he's basi- in it? Yeah, it's like an ensemble, I guess, but he's, like, one of the main Really? Yeah. I didn't know he acted. Yeah. I thought he was just a director. He was pretty hilarious. Jermaine Clement was pretty awesome. He basically played he's Vlad the Impaler. He's amazing. That's amazing. He played <laughs> Vlad <laughs> the Impaler. <laughs> was uh, Brett in it? Brett? Brett. Was Brett in it? No. Was um, Murray? I know. No. Never watched Flight of the Concords, If that's what you're referring to. Oh my god, that's funny. But that is what I'm referring to. I thought you watched it. Really? I have seen it occasionally, but I'm, I haven't like watched. Do you know it. who they are? You would know if they were in it. You the know, Murray, second their manager. One, no, no. He's got like red hair. I don't think so. I'll look it up. Yeah. If he is, I'm in. Oh yes, I looked this movie up the day I got my haircut. Really? Yeah. That's hilarious that you did. I was going. I was going to watch this as as, uh, as my last scene. I, I totally forgot it. about it until like you just <laughs> oh, mentioned wow. it. You were gonna. How hilarious! What's the name of it again? I missed it. What we do in the shadows. 
the director did some Flight of the Concords, that I think, also. Oh, probably. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. This movie came out a couple years ago, and it has 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. So it's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. rock. I think it's probably, I think on Metacritic it was like 76 or something like that, so. Decent reviews. It's kind of hard to talk about because there isn't really a plot. It's just like kind of meandering, like yeah, just like it's just four their guys day-to-day, who live together, right? day-to-day lifestyle, right? Day-to-day lifestyle, like what they deal with, like the chore wheel. Yeah, just yeah. It's kind of hard to talk about yeah. besides that. Dubay yeah. said it's best if like Don. you had roommates or Don Don Dubay on um, Brock Street and Whippy. Check him out, cool guy. <laughs> um, he's like it's best if you like lived with people before you get like the idiosyncrasies that people have to deal with like living with each other and stuff yeah I haven't lived with roommates before but like my buddies have and they have like they like they have like a chore wheel that they go through and they have like this one guy's <laughs> troubled and can't like clean up after like, like after himself and shit it's be cool to see that but vampires he's like the know, loner like. guy <laughs> yeah. like the Nosferatu guy in the basement <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous I definitely recommend it if you're it's pretty short it's like an hour and 20 minutes like so it's you can knock it out pretty quickly yeah but um, I'm mm. going to give it um, light four. Light four to five. Light four? As far as comedy goes. Yeah. All it was right. pretty enjoyable. It was pretty light watch, but still enjoyable. Okay, I think uh, I'll jump in with my last scene, if that's all right for any. That is... You go right ahead. Okay, because I see you perusing the memory banks. I'm trying to see if it was Ray Stabby in it. That's Murray. From... Okay. Do you remember the actor's name? Yeah, Ray Stabby. I think he was, yeah. I'm in. Consider it watched. Go ahead, Ty. I think he was a werewolf. Okay. <laughs> Tell us your latest <laughs> fuck up. Makes sense. All right. So this is a... I'm going to... Let me just... Okay. So this is God. a movie that I've wanted to... <laughs> Not a good start. <laughs> these are movies that I've wanted to watch. No, Tim, it's okay. You'll, you'll, you'll back me up here. Um, these are movies I've wanted to watch for a very long time. Didn't actually get around to it until now. Like, I've wanted to watch them for years. Okay. Uh... Galactic Criminal Riddick okay. oh. is on the run with bounty hunters on his tail. He receives guidance from Arion, played by Judy Dench, ambassador from the Elemental Race, who informs him that a warrior army known as the Necromongers is annihilating all the humans in the galaxy. Uh, the wise Arion urges Riddick into battle, believing he is the one man who can defeat the Necromongers. I gotta say... Chronicles of Riddick, oh, not as amazing as I thought it was as I thought it was going to be. Let me let me pause there. Yeah, did you watch Pitch Black? I watched Pitch Black first. Okay. Yeah, I watched okay, Pitch I Black. See. I see what's going on. A little before I went a couple of days ago, and then I watched Chronicles of Riddick. I'm very yeah, unfamiliar with this franchise. Is Chronicles of Riddick the second one? Yes. Yeah. Pitch Black is the first one. Yeah, yeah. and I then think. Riddick is the third one, which I have yet to see. So there's only three. Yeah. Yes. Plus oh. a cartoon. Okay, called Dark Theory. I gotcha. heard rumors okay. that there's going to be a fourth. Ooh, yeah. Yeah? Is that, that it's part? not confirmed, but Vin Diesel's working on it. He owns, like, rights to this character now. Yeah. He owns a lot of rights to a lot of, to, to a lot of things, actually. Um, I gotta say, not, not as amazing. Pitch Black came out uh, 2000, I believe. 2000, 2001. Yeah. yeah. So, so had you watched Pitch Black before this week? Either? No, I hadn't, I hadn't seen any of them. Interesting. So Pitch I gave Black, them both to him. Yeah, Tim was cleaning out his uh, his DVD stacks and gave me uh, not because I don't like these movies, but because I rebought them on Blu-ray. Uh, you had to put that out there. Tim <laughs> is a big fan. Uh-huh. So this one had like it was like it had like a the 2000 Pitch Black had like a nice sci-fi like low budget. It wasn't the low budget, but it was time. Low budget. Yeah. It was no. it, it was as is for its time. It was very good. You could tell that it was dated, but it was really good. Whereas I'm gonna have to watch this. It's good. I'm gonna have to fucking watch this. Have but, you seen it, Scott? Hold it right there. Yeah. Riddick? Uh, Pitch Riddick? Black. Pitch Black, yeah. yeah. Okay. You like it? Yeah, good. I like it. Yeah. Oh my god, I have to watch it then. Yeah. Black. You right. borrow it on Blu-ray. I'm in. <laughs> you can borrow I got I got it on DVD if you want that. <sighs> Ty, it was hard enough to commit. <laughs> Let me watch it on blue. Okay. I don't speak the name of those three letter things you just mentioned. Okay. Um but with this one here, like, it, like, not that I went overboard. Like, there was a lot of CG, but it wasn't bad CG. It was just I feel like they they, they took away from what made the first one actually good. Mm-hmm. They changed too much. It went too big. They expanded it, the yeah. universe so in such yeah. a huge way. Yeah, like it went from like literally one small. It, like it reminded me a lot of uh, the first one. Kind of reminded me of Con Air a little bit. Like you know, it's just like the one like kind of not really an anti-hero, but kind of like one independent guy working with the rest of the guys. So you know, like it. it 
kind of in that aspect it was kind of interesting mm-hmm. I don't know how I just related a Vin Diesel movie to a Nicolas Cage movie but I did um, only much of a stretch it. yeah so but then like this one here just like it totally changed everything it was yeah it was like multiple worlds different races it was totally different the only thing it was the same yeah. was Vin Diesel yeah so that was, was like, just the same character in a completely different yeah. story. story. It did was. He, does he direct these movies? No, no. write them. David Tui directs them. Mm-hmm. Did he do the third one as well? Yeah. Okay. Would I know him? He directed um, these three, plus the Perfect Getaway. Oh, I like that one. Yeah. I don't Perfect know what that getaway. is. Mila Jonovic. Oh, I was thinking of the Getaway. Sorry. Oh my god. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Timothy Olyphant. No, Still no, don't know. Don't him. care. Um, Steve Zahn. Uh, yeah, Steve Zahn's in it. Still I've seen it. And Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> and Chris Hemsworth, that's right. Oh my god. Outstanding. Yeah. It's a horror movie, right? Yeah, yeah. thriller. Yeah, thriller. Yeah. yeah. Seen it. How yeah. fucked is that? <laughs> um I wanted to ask you, Sweetie, what was I gonna say? So okay, you, okay so yeah. obviously you haven't seen the third one? I haven't seen the third one. I tried to watch it last night, but I was pretty hammered. So <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I tried to watch it after Yeah, I went um, home. <laughs> I'm just like wow. I'm, I'm gonna watch Riddick right now. So you haven't slept? Yeah, no, I didn't watch it. Explains the shades. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, it's pretty bright down here. Um, but yeah, so like, it, I can't really... I don't want to recommend... Like, not not the best sequel I've seen. Was, do you have hope for the third one? Are I you do. Are still going to watch it? I, I'm do, I, I feel like I have to. To prepare you for the, for the third one, yeah. it goes much smaller again. It go, okay, good. He's okay. isolated on a planet. Okay. This is what I've they heard. they learned from the, what, yeah. you know, yeah. the yeah. criticism of the second one more. Yeah. 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 I've heard kind of... That's the like reaction I've heard. Yeah. The first one, great. Second one, lost it. The third one brings it brings back. Brings it back. Yeah. Was it? Did they go overboard in the CG for the third one? You know, was it like it's more CGI heavy than the first one? Yeah. But it's again like he's isolated on the planet. Some mercs, so some mercenaries I mean, yeah. come to find him. So it's a lot more of like a smaller story. Again. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm happy yeah. with that. Okay. I, I have a theory. Like I think the third one probably goes smaller because they had to budget wise. <laughs> probably. Have you guys heard? Kind of well, it only got like, they got like twenty nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes. The third one, the second one. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, third yeah, one's yeah, yeah. better, but like thirty eight on Metacritic. Like, I know third one's not great on uh, on Rotten Tomatoes. On Rotten Tomatoes, I don't think. I think it's decent. It's probably fresh. It's like sixties. Chronicles right? got six point seven on IMDb, so I'm not really sure. I like, can't trust IMDb. No. Fuck them. Um, <laughs> but I was gonna say, Vin Diesel actually like mortgaged his house and put all his. Like, literally everything in his name into the third one. Really? Did you know this? Yeah. I did not know that. He only signed on to do the next few Fast and Furious movies. Yeah. That's right, yeah. I just remembered what I was saying. He only came back for the fourth Fast and the Furious movie with the caveat in his um, contract that he could do the third Riddick movie. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. And then they were like, okay, well... You can do a third Riddick movie, but you're, you're going to have to basically pay for it. Yeah. 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 So he wow. literally mortgaged his house. He said, this was it for me. He's like, this is my passion <laughs> this project. This is your make it or break it. Yeah. If this film didn't make money, my life literally would be over. Yeah. <laughs> Pitch Black has Incredible. a 57. Chronicles of Riddick has like a 29. And then Riddick has 58. Okay. I'm going to have to let you keep that Blu-ray. <laughs> I five-banged Pitch Black. I think. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. What? Wow. I think I gave it a heavy three. No, a light four. So that's probably Rotten close Tomatoes to me, so. yeah. has given your five bang ten percent per star, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. Wow. In this, I'm gonna have to give it maybe a, a heavy four, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. What? <laughs> uh, I actually bought that. Yeah. Was, wow. Uh, light light two. Light two. Okay. Yeah. That's Vicious. In line with the. I probably give it like a two. Heavy too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, not, not, didn't, didn't love it. Wow. It was nice seeing Vin Diesel actually act though. Like it was not like, like seeing him like you know when he does. <laughs> yeah, that sounded really bad. But, like uh... in Fast and Furious, all you do is just see him like do like a really sh- bunch of shitty one liners and then driving around. That's why he I'm just drives around. Looks cool. Yeah, but this is like that. You see him like act. It was really cool. You would say he was actually acting in this. Yeah. Really. Shit, Tim. Oh yeah. Scott. It's been a while. What's well, his while. passion project? Yeah, yeah, apparently. he loves his Frank Ice. It's yeah, his baby, right? Sick. So, check out the first one. Uh, watch the second one because you kind of have to. <laughs> watch I'll, the third uh, one because you kind of have to. Third one, yeah, just keep going with and it. And then the fourth is coming, so you gotta watch that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll be seeing the theaters. Oh yeah. Well, I'll jump in. Go ahead. Oh, that's a shame. My last scene this week, ladies. <laughs> Little film that you will not know from the. 
plot synopsis, so I'll just give you the title. 2012's Contiki. Oh. Ah. Uh, Y'all familiar with this pop? Yeah. So this is the, what's the one you Scott recommended to baffled. me? <laughs> it's not ringing it. I mean, I remember, I know the name, but... Yeah, like, I, I, don't I was worried, Ty. Yeah. I was worried you were going to last seen it this week. <laughs> we were going to have our first ever crossover, but it evades us yet again. So, a legendary explorer, Thor Heyerdahl, his epic 4,300-mile crossing of the Pacific on a balsa wood raft in 1947 in an effort to prove that it was possible for South Americans to settle in Polynesia in pre-Columbian times. So, based on a true story, like... They say it's one of the most um, under, like, it got no spotlight, this story. And it's one of the most, like, inspirational stories of all time. So, what I just said, uh, this guy in 1947 literally sailed 4,300 miles on, like, a shitty shitbox, like, bamboo raft. Yeah. Yeah, or balsa wood. wood, to be specific, I guess. Well, just, very buoyant balsa wood. Yes. And uh, he, so yeah, it's. I was going to say a biopic. Not really a biopic. It's not like Cradle to the Grave or anything like that. But it's uh, following Thor. <laughs> not the Thor you may be thinking. Oh, Thor was a name. It's okay. We, not, yeah, so not the Norse it. god. This yeah, is it not, Chris Hemsworth on a boat? No. Fuck, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> we did see that last year. <laughs> and it was much worse. Um, <laughs> I like this movie a lot. Comes out. Very good. Savage. When did this movie come out? 2012. Okay. It was nominated that year for Best Foreign Film at the Academy Awards. Foreign Film, okay. What <coughs> language is this in? Funny enough. English? English. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Norwegian film, but a little fun fact it's for you. Norwegian, ya, right, right. I guess it's Norwegian old. made. They filmed, with the whole cast is Norwegian, so they filmed one in Norwegian speech. Whatever the, <laughs> what language do they speak? <laughs> I'm looking at you, Scott. Uh, Swedish? No. <laughs> French? <laughs> Norwegian, probably. I guess Norwegian. Norse? I don't know. I it's don't know definitely not called Norwegian. <laughs> but, probably um, is Norwegian. No. Impossible. Norwegian speak. They were speaking Norwegian speak for <laughs> one filming of this film. And the other one they filmed in English. They reshot it and they did it in English. Well, they shot it simultaneously. Norwegian. Like, they did two of each what? take. Yeah. So there's like a there's an English version and there's a Norwegian version. Which would have different yeah. takes, so potentially different. Exactly. Weird. But I feel like they shot a, this movie twice. So which one did you watch? The subtitled version or? I wouldn't say they shot it twice. Yeah. Because yeah, they were doing it simultaneously, but I watched the English version because that's the only one available on Netflix. Okay. I feel like it hurt the film because naturally they're not speaking in their natural like. Yeah, dialect. I'd rather see Norwegian plus I was script, subtitles. I didn't even know this was an option. I was like, this is bizarre. Why are they speaking English? Like, what is Did going they had, on? They had, like, Norwegian accents and everything? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this is so weird. Like, why are they speaking English? And I looked it up in my memory, of course, because I know everything about film and never look anything up. I remembered that I already knew and didn't read <laughs> that they, uh, <laughs> yeah, shot it in Norwegian also. Bizarre. I wonder if that was, like, in a English studio also. decision, like... Yeah, they said it was. It was the studio's decision so that they could secure international release and like international funding. The wow. the other like investors that that were producing it said you have to have English version. Is that is this common? Like, have you guys seen? No, I've never. Heard of this I've never heard of that. <laughs> never. Like, that's why. Yeah. That's insane, right? Why? Because you're gonna produce just... two different movies, right? Yeah. Like, you're gonna get two different takes. So it's gonna be <laughs> two different. Literally, movies. will be a different. Yeah. Movie. You um, might edit it at the same pace, but... So yeah, just all Norwegian cast, and I'm going to spare myself saying all of their names, because they're obviously all unknown. But what I was going to say about that is, it kind of hurt the movie for me, because you can tell they're pretty wooden in their English-speaking mm. version, which mm. isn't fair to them, necessarily. But, like, what? <laughs> it's the movie that I saw. Like, it is an option. They made it in English and released it, so I have to judge the English one. It wasn't, like, they weren't awful or anything, but the star of this movie, though, was the directing. Directed by two partners, Joachim Roning and Espen Sandberg. No relation to Andy Sandberg. Damn Die. it. Don't even say it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they were very, very good. Uh, I was totally impressed. Visually, like, beautiful. Just the shots on the open water and everything was just stunning. 
like the like I watched it like Netflix streamed in HD. It was just gorgeous. Like the blue water against like all the sunsets and everything. They just they really know how to make a movie look beautiful. And um, a lot of the the things they run into while on the raft, like it, the whole time I was thinking this is just better than in the heart of the sea. Like Ron Howard is so stylless, and these like newcomer directors with no budget, sixteen million dollar budget on this Whoa. film, in the heart of the sea, one hundred million dollar budget. These guys <laughs> made them look like shit. Everything was practical, uh, maybe not by choice, like. They had real sharks, a real whale, unlike in the heart of the sea, had fucking CGI whale, like real whale swimming under the raft. It was amazing. All like everything underwater was just all real. I couldn't believe my eyes. They had the guys swimming with like real sharks, in like <laughs> shark attack like action sequences. <laughs> it was amazing. That's crazy. Yeah, the directing was like amazing. I just. I don't know, I wish I could see the Norwegian version. I don't even know if it's, like, got released here. Probably not. You probably have to try and download it. That's what I was thinking. Try and download Not but that we can download legally. it. Legally. No, I don't course. download things legally, so... Yeah. Um, That's out of the question. HD copy. HD DVD rip. See if you can borrow it. <laughs> I'll buy it yeah. on Amazon. Yeah. There we go. Support Norwegian filmmaking. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was really good. I Well, it wasn't perfect, but I'd probably give it a heavy three. I think... Yeah, had the acting been a little better with the Norwegian side, maybe could bump it. Maybe a little higher. A little higher, but... Uh, Recommended. Yeah. Oh, and what I meant to say, makes me optimistic about the new Pirates. Yes. Ty, I'm sure you'll be happy to hear this. Hype. Paul McCartney. Now, Hype. Don't, yeah. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I, don't, I would never give a fuck about a Pirates movie, <laughs> but with these directors, I'm optimistic. Wait. Wait, they're directing? They direct, yeah. Yeah, the directors of this movie are directing Pirates 5. What? I, yeah. I thought that was common knowledge. Sorry, that's happening. Wow. I knew that. Pretty I did cool. not make that connection. Yeah. That's crazy. So you are optimistic for that movie now. Yeah, I was going to say I'm excited. That's a little too yeah, generous. Yeah, that's for you. <laughs> but it's, uh, it looks it's like a you very good fit. It's giving you pause. You know. It's giving me pause? It's giving you pause. Now you're, now you're reconsidering your former oh, uh, stance. right. That's a term. Yes. Correct here. I've never, never heard of it. Never heard it in my now, life. No question. Right? Neither has Ty. Is this one of those weird like circumstances where like, oh, we have like a movie that takes place on the ocean. <laughs> what other directors have directed stuff that takes place on the ocean? Yes, it is that. <laughs> but it it could it should work. Oh yeah yeah right. Just I think that like I think it's funny how Hollywood probably like this, that probably was literally one of the reasons that's the only that reason. someone came up with was like hey they've directed a. A boat mm-hmm. movie before. Let's get let's get Ron Howard. He's done that. Let's, oh god. Yeah. <laughs> that, well, let's put that put it that way. I'm happy they didn't get Ron Howard. This movie made me <laughs> realize two things. I do not like In the Heart of the Sea even more now, and I'm actually kind of excited for Pirates Five. Yeah, you are. Never thought I would say that ever. Wow. Yeah. Giant Death comes out. The on the water like practical action sequences should be amazing in Pirates Five. Sick. If this is any indication. There's a scene where a guy goes fucking ham on a shark with just a knife, and it's vicious. Wow. I'm going to have to see Pirates 4 now. This is great. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, I'm screwed now. Fuck. Shit. All right. Okay. Well, Heavy 3. Awesome. Let's move on into our review of the week, then. This week. We saw a movie this week? We saw a movie this week, guys. I actually saw it twice. Oh. Hardcore Henry. A first person action film from the eyes of Henry, who is resurrected from death with no memory. He must discover his identity and save his wife from a warlord with a plan to bioengineer soldiers and take over the world, basically. Directed by Ilya Nyshuller, starring Charlotte Copley, Haley Bennett, Danila Kozlovsky, and uh, Tim Roth, actually. Yeah, he pops out. Tim Roth technically is in this movie. <laughs> technically, yes. <laughs> He's, hey, it's a fact. It is, it is tec- it's technically, yes. This movie came out this past Friday, April 8th, 2016, and also premiered on the Toronto International Film Festival last year. Um, what do you guys think of Hardcore Henry? Let's start with Tim. <laughs> Let's get your general uh, thoughts. My general <laughs> thoughts was, are... Uh, so probably, probably some of the worst acting I've seen in my life. <laughs> um, 
Wow. And the storyline was a little bit weak. Pretty weak. Aside from that, though, I had a great time in the theater. Yeah. All right, time. I gotta say, this movie is nothing what I thought it was going to be. Like... What did you expect? What did you think it was going to be? I did not like... This isn't like when you go to the like the adult theater. This isn't that <laughs> oh, kind of first person movie that you're used well, to. Well, it's not or... what I'm used to, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. For me, it's just like a black room, a bunch of weird guys, nobody looked at each other in the eyes. It's <laughs> not what I was used to. So, but then we saw this, no nudity, which threw me off right away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is hardcore in the name, come on. Um, Same, similar plots. Yeah. So like... But like, they're like... There are like certain characters that I did not expect, like the, like the main villain. We did not expect him or that character at all. Like the, they they did not allude to any, any sort of like yeah any sort of I don't want to give too much away until the spoilers, but they did not allude to these abilities that some people would have. They showed none of that in the trailer. Are you sure? Like ninety percent sure. Really? Yeah, I I saw none of that. Interesting. But the first person, like, I was kind of afraid I was going to be thrown off by the first person just because I thought it might be, you know, jarring too much, like, like a little all over the place, but it wasn't. It was very well shot. Um, like, I agree with Tim's storyline, a little weak, but they had some nice t- twists and turns to it. I enjoyed it. Yeah, the story was pretty darn weak. Yeah. Um, the plot just was basically Charlotte Copley telling Henry where to go. Yeah. And then him just fighting people and yeah. getting to the location. Yeah. A couple times. That's just literally... A lot like a video game. Yeah. Like literally there's a map that pops objective. up. Like, your objective is here. Get there. Duck now. Yeah. Throw a grenade. <laughs> yeah. But there was some interesting things. Though. Like they, they did some interesting twists and turns. Like some characters that... Like... Uh, what's, what what was his name? Uh, Andrew? Andrew like, like, Aiken? Aiken. Was it Aiken? Yeah. The guy who kept, who kept popping up all over the place. Oh. Toronto Copley, Jimmy. Jimmy, thank you. Yes, like Jimmy, like Jimmy's yeah, character, I, very interesting character. Did like his character? Yeah. So yeah, that he, was. It sounded, it seemed like he had a grand time. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like he probably had a blast filming this. Yeah. Exec- he executive produced it also. Yeah. Really? All the all really? the people who were in this movie were like executive producers and like the, like they worked on the like on the technical side as well. All the actors. Makes yeah. sense. It was like super low budget. Yeah. So they probably had to get as many helping. Like hands. I remember seeing like the executive producers' names, and then like and it said starring, and then it showed all the exact same names. Well, the direct, yeah, the the as far as the character of Henry, like it was played by like four or five different people. Yeah. Stuntman, oh, really? and even the director was in a, was Henry in a couple scenes. Yeah. <laughs> really. Yeah. If you guys see the any behind the scenes photos, like the rig involved, it's like this massive like mask with like a can- GoPro on like the face, and yeah. like it's like. It's pretty. It seemed pretty intense. There's like a mic on the forehead. It's like I do really want to see like a behind the scenes done like, like oh, yeah. how they like shot how they, how they shot some of these stuff like some of the fight scenes. Yeah. I feel like that'd be very cool to see. That'd be amazing. Yeah, I just want to say cause I I said there uh, that plot was lacking. My general thoughts though, like I still had a good time. Yeah, I still like, did enjoy it. It did kind of take me out of it. How like some of the things that were happening were pretty like nonsensical sometimes, like and like some of the reasons for certain plot you know machinations just were very like forced sometimes like it just felt lazy sometimes i'm trying i'm trying to think of like specifics yeah but you can't you um, it's hard to say that without giving too much away here yeah but yeah it wasn't it was that wasn't the star of the show the star was was the action sequences and the use of the point of view first person which I, a lot of people are saying that, you know, it's an interesting... It's like, it's cool to do something first like that. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the best. Yeah. Because I have a feeling like there could definitely be some potential in the future now that this has been done. Like, imagine like a like a video game like adaptation just done in first person. Like, maybe like a Portal movie or something like that. Like, yeah, for sure. I could see something like that that has a more interesting story mm-hmm. instead of just fully first person action but I had a like all those people that are clamoring for like a Half-Life movie yeah that's been yeah they've been clamoring for that for a while now that'd be pretty awesome J.J. Abrams working on it but even even like a Portal movie because like like, Portal would be great a character that like doesn't have a voice yeah that's like pretty perfect to do as this movie 
And like like for example that that's one reason. The way they explained how he didn't have a voice in yeah. the movie. Which just like your voice kinda cheap. Up, but like, they they the lab got broken in right as they were gonna add his voice. Like they had oh, to yes. like yeah. explain that. But the like, sorcerer of sound was about to add his voice? Yeah. I don't know, but we'll get into specifics. There's a bunch of things I liked that we're gonna get into later, I'm sure. But Adam, what are your thoughts? General uh, thoughts. Allow me to jump in, ladies. You guys don't sound too blown away by Hardcore Henry. I I was blown away. <laughs> I'm gonna get into specifics. There's a lot yeah. of things I like. We need to, we need to get uh, going to spoilers in order to talk really talk about this movie. Well, what would you think though? Let me just get this out of the way real quick. Okay. Zero out of five. Wow. Just kidding. Five out of five. <laughs> wow. Oh, shit. I don't know if you're joking or not. <laughs> just kidding again? I'm no. Done. Yeah, just kidding? Just, I didn't just see the one, the one kidding. <laughs> uh, favorite movie five of the bang. year. Mind Equals Blown. Blew me away. I wow. was going to try to like don the six out of five rule on this episode nope. to give to this movie, but I'm I knew Ty wouldn't let me. No, nope, you can't here. do it. This is, uh, this for me, this felt like the Fury Road of this year. Just that frenetic, insane, wow. frenetic, insane pace. I've never seen a movie like this before in my life, and I don't know if we will ever see it again because I don't think it made any money. So I feel like it's like a once in a lifetime movie. And wow. I just, just like you've you been just glamoured. You've been glamoured by the POV. If this wasn't um, POV, I mean it is. So that argument is always weird. But like, you yeah. have so fast. Yeah. Thing. If Jack Nicholson didn't have twelve Oscar nominations, he wouldn't be that good of an actor. But he does. He cause, does. Because I don't know how you can give five out of five to a movie with like terrible acting and terrible script. Do you, right. You, That's why I'm kind of baffled. Yeah. Well, for me, yeah, for me, it definitely gets a free pass because the action sequences blew my mind, and that's the intent of this movie. They weren't going for Academy Award level acting. I have to disagree with you. And there's not a lot acting. of acting. Definitely did not. Terrible. There's not a lot of acting in it. Yeah. There's not a lot of attempt at story in it either. For what they attempted, yeah. Five out of five. Blew Fair. my mind. Fair. All right. Some of the most like creative choreographed action sequences I've ever seen. And for a ten million dollar budget, something like Batman vs Superman had a four hundred million dollar budget. It's pretty impressive. Two hundred fifty million dollar budget. Well, sorry, factoring in like marketing and everything. Right. Four hundred million. Wow. Five out of five. Five out of five. I know sorry. you did have a good time in the theater when we were. We Jaw were was dropped. Let's talk about some scenes <laughs> then. How about that opening sequence? Did that kind of set the tone? I forgot to mention maybe my favorite. Well, I didn't forget to mention, but I was going to mention maybe my favorite opening credits of all time. Wow. I think the opening credits were ridiculous. Better than Deadpool. Yeah. Like, my mind oh, yeah. was blown. Yeah. I was like, this, the whole time I was like, this is what Deadpool like wants to be. This is like no holds Savage. barred. Just pure, like, knives ups yeah. going through necks. I was like, what the fuck? Bullets right through the forehead, like... Yeah. Stabbing. No, I made myself clear. I understand this isn't, you know, the Godfather. This isn't, like... For what it is. It's I'm saying for what it is. It's a pure adrenaline shot of, like, pure fun. I'd, I'd agree with that. But, yeah, the, the opening credits, just... I've never seen anything like that. Like, no cutting away, just, like, one shot of the knife, like entering the flesh and, like coming out the other side I was like what I've never seen that just a gun just put point blank and just pull the trigger just like, okay. I have literally never seen that before that's one of the many things this movie showed me that I have never broken, seen broken broken bottle just right into Through the chest the, oh my god <laughs> oh, pretty yeah. pretty great opening <laughs> sequence um, there's one there's a, there's a bunch of shots that I found hilarious like when there's one scene where Jimmy like kicks off this soldier off the steps. Yes. And right as he kicks him off, like Henry like <sighs> turns and shoots him right in midair. There's kind of like a speed ramping for a second, isn't there? Yeah, it yeah. slows down. <clears throat> yeah, amazing. Just like insult to injury. <laughs> yeah. Just while you're flying through the air. <laughs> Double tap. And then I think after he lands, Jimmy runs by and pegs him a few more times. <laughs> yeah. Like, just for the fuck of it. I gotta say, Jimmy's like Jimmy's character like made this movie for me. I think. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. See, I don't I don't know. Shalto, I love him in District 9, but I find he's uh, over District 9. Thank you. That was bugging the shit out of me. <sighs> Anyways. Wow. 
he's just kind of chose on the scenery now. Like, I don't find him that great of an actor, but he was good enough. Like, he was fun. He was funny. I don't know. He was, yeah, I enjoyed it. He wasn't him. atrocious or anything. I think, Tim, you're out of line. Worst acting you've ever seen in your life? That's vicious. The villain you stand is by that? horrendous. Swedish Kurt Cobain. You don't like Swedish Kurt Cobain? Horrendous. <laughs> Swedish. So you're not He's a Russian. Cobain. He reminded me of the guy from Room. Or The Room. That room? Oh, the room. The Tommy room. Wiseau. Tommy Wiseau. It sounds like Tommy Wiseau. I thought I, it worked. I, I was trying to peg what he sounded like. And <laughs> he sounded like an idiot. Like, he sa- he re- kept reminding me of someone that I just couldn't put my finger on. Tommy Wiseau meets Lex Luthor from Batman v Superman. You get that villain. Wow. Horrendous acting. Yeah, I didn't. He really. And he me. has like the most like almost screen time besides Charlton. I thought it worked. I thought it was like offbeat, like personality and you can't place his accent he just came off as a sociopath to me but in more of a authentic way than like a jesse eisenberg like cackling like clearly acting way this guy seemed very like real to me because sometimes like i'll even admit like maybe it was bad like sometimes bad acting can work in your favor like a bautista and guardians of the galaxy if you're used for the right character Mm. like for me it worked he I just, like, I couldn't put my finger on what he was doing. He was so off-putting, and, like, it just made me so uncomfortable. I think it could have worked. Like, obviously, I don't think his performance is, like, amazing, but it made me uncomfortable, and I thought it was creepy. When he was, like, sniffing, all the sniffing he was doing was, like, disgusting. Yeah. You all know what I'm talking about when I say sniffing. Cocaine? Yeah. Nailed it. Nice. I did, like, um... Jimmy's dance sequence. Oh my god, the Ex Machina like yeah. rip off moment. Yeah, yeah, I did instantly think of Ex Machina. Right, I'm like really, <laughs> but it was pretty funny. I That's also funny. I also liked like how they use in that sequence when they're escaping from his lab. They use like all the different Jimmys. Like we'll we'll get into that. I don't want to spoil too much. I guess. Yeah. Maybe we should like just get into spoilers. Yeah, I'm thinking so. Yeah, there's not much before more we, we get say. too far. Yeah, okay. let's do that. Let's do that then. What do we do we want to rate it first? I guess. Got my We're rating. Got Adam rating. Five out of five. When I put this on Letterbox, I will put in the like review section six out of five. Nope. Since I'm not allowed on here. Mm-hmm. Wow. The day I can six bang Kingsman is the day you can six bang something. Okay. That's a rule. I'll wow. trade you Kingsman for hardcore, Henry. Guys. No. Tim is just raging over. No. <laughs> <laughs> no six bangs. No. Nope, okay. All right. No six bangs. Fine. I'm gonna go with light four. It's only a five. <laughs> light four. Just a five. Because I did enjoy this movie a lot, and I did kind of have to turn off my brain because I had a hard time, you know, not keep thinking about the plot and yeah. how bad the story was, but then the rest of it kind of saved it for me, and made it quite enjoyable. So light four. Light four. I have questions. I will put it that way. When we hit spoiler section. Tim. <clears throat> He's going to give it a one despite me. He's going to look me <laughs> in the eye. Kind of balance the scale. Eh, it's a fucking one. We're going to heavy three on this. You son of a bitch. Heavy three. Tyler. Pass. No. Nope. No. Pass. Every time. You try it every time. Let me give this a heavy three. Heavy three. Heavy three. Heavy yeah. three is on light fours, eh? Wow. It's no five banger. Well. Definitely not a five banger. Let me let me get into what I was gonna say then. Now that we're in spoilers. Spoiler spoilers. section, don't listen. Spoilers. Unless you've seen it. Um I guess I kinda when I, when I said the Jimmy dance, how he was like <laughs> the Jimmy the dance. Jimmy dance. <laughs> That's just what I've written down. <laughs> <laughs> just Jimmy dance. Jimmy dance. Um oh, you want to dance? But how it, how it, how we like switch between his different personas, yeah, his different avatars, and when when he's escaping, like how it, it just breaks into his like punk it mohawk just, version, yeah, yeah and he just like goes ham Fucking on a bunch of guys, savage. and then just like blows up basically with like a <laughs> game, his, his grenade, ghillie, his, his ghillie suit just like just just jumps, yeah, oh yeah, that yeah. Too. but his like punk version, like he like blew himself yeah. up too basically. And by the way, mate, we don't need a sniper anymore. Ah, <laughs> boom. <laughs> Pretty hilarious. Did not expect that. 
Like I was I was so confused as to why like Jimmy kept dying. Yeah, and... I do like that reveal. That was a cool. Well, yeah. say, you guys kept saying the story is atrocious. That, I thought that was great. That I thought, I thought was that cool. aspect was good. Yeah. What like so? What did you guys not like? I didn't like the villain. Really, I didn't understand. Like, like they didn't have any like motivations. Like why? Like why is the guy? He's just an evil maniacal. Maniac. Well, him he the, just wants to take over the world. Here's the thing. He That's spent his the, plan. He spent the entire time yeah. like saying that he wanted to like capture him and like steal his technology. But at the same time, the entire movie he tried to kill him. The entire movie. It also lets him go a couple times. Yeah, like that doesn't make any sense. Does he yeah. let him go? Yeah. When does he let him go? The train on the train. He just um, hit him uh, with a baseball bat and like knocked yeah. him out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he he sent him to be dragged away and like shot. Yeah, which doesn't make sense to the guy to the to the character. He he wanted the technology. Didn't he? In, what he, he wanted? The, didn't he invent him though? Why would he want the technology? Didn't he have like an army at the end? You're, so you're confused. I'm confused by you guys. What you got? You guys are wrong. I'm confused that you guys have yeah. these questions. It comes down to me being wrong and <laughs> Hardcore Henry being wrong. I don't. Know. I don't I think, think he wanted good. his technology. What? Wasn't that the whole? Wasn't that kind of the point? He he invented him. Why would he want? I don't understand. Why would he want his technology? What are you talking about? Well, uh, at the end. He says that he's like using his like experience basically in his memories to like use it for emotional motivation for the super soldiers basically because that was the problem when they when they show that like that security footage of what happened to Jimmy Jimmy. like how he was like stuck in the room and he got like paralyzed by the soldiers Mm -hmm. and the reason they like were just like flailing around and like they couldn't take orders because they had like no like emotional motivation to do whatever they were doing. Right. And then so they had Henry like experience this thing like through this like smoke screen of having a wife, and then now they'll take that memory and like implant it in all the soldiers, so then they have like a reason to fight, I guess. Okay, so it wasn't his tech. I do apologize, but it was his memories that he wanted. And that's what he was trying to get his memories. Yeah, but he spent the entire time trying to kill him. I assume he. Yeah, like they sent a bunch of guys like after him to like shoot him to death, basically, and he killed them. Well, he, I'm sure he could have taken the memories out after killing him. He's not gonna just let him willingly take them. I guess. I didn't have a problem. I didn't really have a problem with that aspect, but uh, I don't know. I just thought there could have been more, as far as plot goes, like more. more. I I didn't have a problem with it at all. Like story again, I'll draw another Fury Road comparison, like. If the action is blowing my mind, I don't need a plot. I don't think there's a plot in Fury Road. No, I, I, yeah, right? like it's, it's like an eighties action movie. Like there's never a plot. But the moments where there was like story moments and like, yeah. dialogue, that like took me out. Like I just didn't care about what That's was happening. Fair, I guess I didn't mind it. I I was never like bored. I I've I found like everything they were doing was like another clever. I was like, oh, it's a clever way to like. For an ex- like the Shalto Copley thing, that reveal was so because I was like, okay, like, like it would have been a four if they didn't have a good explanation for why he kept getting blown up. I thought they weren't going to explain it. And I was like, oh god, like, I kind of don't like like this. This is all hinging on this reveal. Yeah. And then I thought the reveal was great of how he got paralyzed and everything. I know you guys said you liked it as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, wow, like another clever... And the Avatar thing is just like a clever excuse to get these awesome action moments like the punk rock berserker yeah. and the like soldier guy. It's just all like clever excuses to like write that in for the movie. I just thought it was awesome. I, I, I like it, and at the same time, I don't. Like, because really? the, even the way you said it, it's an excuse. It's not but like... it's clever. I guess. It just... It seems like everything is there to serve that the action not like yeah. the story well like, I definitely think no... it is but it's an action movie like I, I that's what like it's, it is it's there tough. to serve but it's the tough because you gotta separate because like you can have a good action movie yeah because like story. based off what you're like, saying is that like story. it's exceeded what it's planning and doing like what it, like what it set out to do mm-hmm. Transformers sets out to make like robots fighting each other so it's a 5 out of 5 because it exceeds in that sense right but no. it's not because it it's a terrible done. movie. So you gotta like, I think I, you're you're t- you're totally glamored by the POV action. I think. So you would put the level of the acting and writing in Transformers on the same level as this? Probably. Yeah. I would not, at all. What you say is it better than Transformers? A thousand times better. Wow. Are you kidding wow. me? Are you kidding me? The acting in this is really bad. 
it's a thousand times. Have, have you seen Transformers 2 and 3? Are you guys joking? I watched the Mark Wahlberg one. How Did you see, like, racist, humping, like, got characters in this? Like, caricatures? Like, the two Yeah, the plot like, is bad in that movie. But the action is great, so it's a five. So it's a five out of five. The action's not good. It's just, like, two pop cans in a blender. So what they set up to do was to, <laughs> to make bang robots together. Action. No, they didn't. <laughs> That's what Michael Bay said. Out there. Yeah, he sets out to make robots fight f- uh, f- and look other. like shit and be horribly choreographed. You can't say the first Transformers looked that bad. Yeah, the first Transformers is pretty good. That's I think that's what you were comparing it to, right? The first one, just in general. I don't think they're great movies, but I'm just saying that if you're making the just assumption making that a... this is a five out of five movie because like the action is fantastic, so therefore it's a five out of five. It's not a five out of five. The action oh, is five is. out of five, but I'm I'm knocking points off for acting. <laughs> I'm knocking points off for story. I'm knocking points off for some really bad see, uh, effects in a couple scenes, um, and then it ends up being like a heavy three for me. Just shitting on Adam's life right now. Well, uh, well, <laughs> I guess that's fair. I didn't. I don't know. I saw the trailer. I knew what to expect from this movie. It's a ten million dollar like action extravaganza. There's only ten shot of fun. Yeah. Wow. And it was so popular at TIFF that Lionsgate and I think Universal or someone got in a bidding war over it. And they like Damn. paid $10 million for it nice. to give it the wide release. I'm also sounding like I hate this movie. I don't hate this movie. I think it's you really fun. You gave it fun. a zero. It's fine. It it was zero zero we get a heavy I'm three. Out. You give it a heavy three. No. This is good. The action scenes are fantastic in this. Well, I'll just... The acting and the story didn't bother me. I was actually impressed because I expected like no story at all. But when I saw the reveal of the Jimmy avatars, I was like, wow, that's more than what I expected. I expected no explanation whatsoever. Really? Yeah. But then um, couple that with, again, action sequences I've never seen. The villain, did you guys know from the trailers that the villain was going to be able, was gonna be telekinetic? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you see him like, lift yeah. people up. I did not he see that. He lifted someone up in the trailer, I swear to God. Yeah. He did. Yeah. Yeah. You really? see that lab scene in the trailer. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Real, okay, because I did not know that going into this. That's my only question about this movie, is was his telekinetic stuff explained? I don't think no. so. Is so he like, the only one that can do it? Like, why, else, why can't anyone else do I it? I was or? baffled. I was like, that was like the Jimmy thing. I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of confused about the last scene, like when um, Estelle, the the wife, she like goes to shoot Henry and then he like deflects the bullet or something or like what happens? I think it bounced off his hand. It bounced off his hand. Yeah, because he had a metal hand. I wasn't sure if he like telekinetic like deflected <laughs> it back at her. It was like a reveal. Like, no, okay, it was just deflect. He was like, you know, like your reflexes. Oh, don't hand. shoot me! Here's bing. Okay. I did. I do want to talk about the ending sequence because how hilarious was that? Oh, that, I, I was LMAOing. I laughed. Yeah, there's a couple laughed. guys yeah. ahead of us. What? You guys remember those those two guys yeah. that were sitting in the theater like over up from us? Yeah, just losing their shit. They the were whole movie? Just there's a, there's right a couple right there things because because um, a con his like fight with a con he. <laughs> Gone is a cunt. I laughed so hard at that part. Okay, <laughs> they're fighting, and yeah, okay, they're they're going back and forth. He jumps up the like floating corpses and like <laughs> yeah, attacks amazing. him, but then, which I didn't even quite realize the first time I watched it. The second time I did, he rips his <laughs> eye out, wraps his eye. <laughs> oh yeah, wraps his eye around like with the like nerve endings like hanging out, wraps it around his head. <laughs> And then cuts his head in half with his eye. How fucked was that? And then his body just fucking hits him. It's like a helicopter fan and just explodes. Amazing. <laughs> Incredible. That's like that's you a 5 out of 5 for me. I nerve ending <laughs> decapitation. And then he writes like easy, like easy in blood. Like how that savage was, was that? <laughs> like, I haven't laughed that hard in a very long time. How could you do this to me? <laughs> 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 I was Easy. like fucking oh and then she's hanging off the helicopter and he's like shh ding ah! like, what an ending oh god I love this movie so much see that that was pretty great and I did like the use of the queen song yes that yeah. that's so I mean, like he gets he sees the adrenaline on the ground he like takes a double <laughs> shot of great. adrenaline yeah and then just goes crazy like that was pretty that was a pretty great moment that's how I felt watching the movie when he put the two adrenaline needles in his legs. I meant to lean over to you and be like, did Switty just like have a heart attack when <laughs> the Queen song came on? It was amazing. Yeah. Best, like one, like one of the best uh, fight scenes used to that song I think I've ever seen. For sure. 
some of the best fight scenes in general. Like, I love, oh my god, I loved when he, um, took on that, like, big Jack Blonde guy toward the end, like, the fellow soldier. Yeah. And just, like, took, like, rips Savagely his, rips his battery chest out. Open. Yeah. yeah. And, like, charges himself up, and then he's all jacked, and they break through that door. I thought the, the, that was really well done, too, where he actually, like, you saw him, like, open his own chest and, and set it. Like, that was actually really, really well done. Yeah, it makes you wonder how they shot some of these things. Yeah. Like, again, like, I'd love to see it behind the scenes of this. Yeah, that'd be great. All with a GoPro, apparently. Yeah. That's Crazy. so cool. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Blew my mind. Crazy. All right. Any, anything else you guys oh, want to mention? I have another question. Um. Well, we, I guess we can talk about this. Tim Roth with his like one line. Not used at all. Yeah. Ah, they didn't have the budget for Tim Roth. Yeah, he literally. They had the budget for one scene of Tim, Tim Roth. Roth. We'll give you nine million dollars if yeah, that budget went please. to Tim Roth. Yeah. Being in it for thirty seconds. Oh, it's gonna be well, that was just a waste nine. of time. Like you he don't was, need Tim Roth. No, it's it's literally on anyone. They, they, they didn't totally cut the that scene, and it wouldn't have made a difference to me. Like it was. They so put that scene in the trailer, so like you saw Tim Roth, you're like, oh my god, Tim Roth is in this. But see that that might have sold some people in the movie. So I, I, to me, it makes sense. I do love. The scene where Sheldon Copley is like coked out of his mind. <laughs> oh, he's like that, about to operate. He's the like, scene? he's like, no, I'm definitely not in like in the right mind to do this. Yeah, no, no. When he when he walks oh, yeah, out, he hilarious. comes back. He's like, he's all clean. Guys. He's got a giant so, man, afro. He's just like just so, I can't do this. Running around in this, with the underwear with two guns. Like that was amazing. That was a pretty ridiculous scene. The brothel. And does more coke in the middle of the fight scene. He's like him standing. This is a shot of him standing on the bar top, like yeah. just blazing, guns blazing. Like, it's ridiculous, yeah. absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, what I was gonna say, the question, the the opening of the movie with the kids smashing that thing into the wall. Yeah. What is that? I feel like that was kind of like uh, what ended it with that again at the ending. Am I think it's just like his memory, you know, like just one, one of his memories. It, was just, like, it goes back to the Tim Roth scene, like what he actually says. Um, just how the he was bullied, and he just needs to get up and just fight yeah. back. That's like a, like that's a, literally a, like legit memory from him. Yeah. What were they smashing? Like a toy robot. It was just a little which just he walking toy is robot. now because he's like half robot. I guess metaphor. Yeah. Boom. First time I saw it, I didn't is that seven out of five for you now? It's, yeah, it is. <laughs> the first time I watched it, I didn't catch what that thing was. That's what I'm saying. It's a little, saying, it's no. a little like wind up. up. Yeah. Walking robot thing. So. Oh, is that what it was? Okay, I see. Yeah. I see. Anything else you guys want to mention? Uh, crowdfunding was used to get the movie financed, in part. Oh! Toward the end. I got a cool bit of That's trivia. I looked fact. it up. That escalator scene where that woman gets, like, knocked the fuck out. Yeah. Oh, I was laughing. Man. That was a mistake. Um... Uh, an extra like Mrs. Mark and then they ran into that lady oh an arm barter like the one the yeah, yeah. oh that was yeah. so funny and apparently so that she real. got up and asked if they got that shot and they're like yeah and then they <laughs> left in the movie wow what? Yeah. so that was real because it looked pretty real like I was like how she, she got, got hit bodied. hard yeah. yeah I was laughing so yeah. hard at that I was like yeah. oh my god like she yeah. got fucked this whole movie was laughing in disbelief I think yeah, yeah. just like <laughs> what I feel like this movie could go up the more I see it, um, you'll forgive the shortcomings. I'm sure I'll forgive it eventually, eventually, but it will never be a five. I can tell you that. <laughs> It'll be a five. Folks. It has a. I will. It has a 51 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I saw that. I was divisive. horrified. Horrified. Very yeah. divisive. Most people are saying what we're saying, though. Yeah, I like, can't believe people take so much issue with like the acting and like the story. I'm pretty because it's a film, right? It like it's it's a. It's you film. can't. Yeah, it's still a film. <sighs> You still have to rate it Certain in the same yes. categories as other movies. It just, I don't know. I was The impact of the shortcomings in those departments was way lessened by the action, I'd say. I will say I rewatched because uh, this was from the same director as a couple music videos that um, Ilya yes. Nyshuler shot for his band or whatever that were pretty famous on YouTube. Like the one, the one uh, that I watched had like 35 or 33 million views on YouTube and it's that like same first person like sequence like fight sequence basically and um, biting elbows bad motherfucker yes bad motherfucker um, I did see like a POV fight scene on YouTube a few years ago I don't, was this person that's that did same it one. that's through like a, like a city block not a city block but like a you know block as in like a apartment building block with like the reservoir dog suited men, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that was him? Like, like, the end? Yeah, 
Yeah. That's him? Okay. That's so the bro- same that director. Sense. This is his first movie. Yeah, yeah. Now that I've watched that, they shot some scenes there, too, in the same, like, building. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. gotta be. Oh, I was gonna say, did, did they explain why it's set in Russia? Other Guys, the Russian. director's Russian. I know that. But Everyone's they... Russian. There's no reason besides that. So, like, okay. So why is, like, Charlotte Copley there and the wife? <laughs> That's a good question. And Kurt Cobain? Right. Because they're not Russian. Right. Right. <laughs> These are all questions that we don't have answers to. You guys are right. Three out of five. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. Because you were real as fuck it. I didn't want to. I didn't want to add one thing that, like, I didn't. This it's kind of an aside. It's just like a random thought I had. Like, they have all this advanced technology of like biomechanical limbs and like fusing like tissue to like mechanical parts. But yet it's like t- the year two thousand and five Russia. Like you know what I mean? Like Saint Petersburg or Moscow or something. Yeah. Like. The world that they created, like, outside of, like, the visual, like, things, like, it didn't match, like, to me, like, it's, and maybe that was just because of the budget, they couldn't, they couldn't do it, but, I don't know. They That's just something I noticed. Was anyone kind of thrown off that went, like, it's not like they're trying to escape and all of a sudden he opens a door and they're on a fucking blimp? Was anyone kind of thrown off by that at the very beginning? Did anyone, like, how do we feel yeah, about that? It was that? an interesting reveal, it's fine. I was thrown off in a good way, like it had my heart racing. Yeah, I was like, "Holy shit!" Like when he almost fell, and then when they—I wasn't like, sure why he opened that door in the first place. Yeah, just to get out. What's well, that exit? I guess so. Yeah, I <laughs> guess <laughs> you didn't realize it was a blimp. You think she would have? You guys something. are asking a little too many questions. You think she would have said something like, "Why you brought out that exit?" We're in a What's fucking door? blimp. Why that door? <laughs> they don't though? open the door. Why that door? Fuck yeah. Fast Eight. Fuck Transformers Four. Why did Hardcore Henry have a guy run out a exit door when he was exiting? <laughs> It's just not adding up. I do want to mention a scene that I laughed at um, when he hops on that horse. Oh, <laughs> the horse scene! And that like cowboy theme. So starts, fun. Starts out so funny, and then he just gets like bucked Bodied. off. <laughs> he falls, and the music just stops. And he's like, "Okay, all right." <laughs> why not? I remember thinking like, "Why not?" That was so fun. This reminded me, and that's another thing. This reminded me of a video game. This is like oh, a true video game movie. Video game movie. Yeah, like, this, this is literally is... like a tutorial where she's like you, yeah. are, you can do it just swing your fist yeah <laughs> yeah and it just reminded me of a video game because like that's Top what a. i would do in like gta if there was a horse i would jump on it and i'd get bucked off like, <laughs> amazing so we all agree six out of five uh let's go to the news scott thanks guys. yeah let's Appreciate let's move it. on then um big news this week guys King rogue ben. one oh. a star wars story <laughs> sorry not kingsman Rogue One, a Star Wars story teaser trailer was released this past week. And what do we think about it? Adam, let's start with you. You sound like you're ready to well, first. I'm all fired up from Hardcore Henry, so <laughs> let me continue my blazing reviews. Rant. Rant. Rogue One, what do I think? What does the Frain Man think? Yes. The only guy with interesting opinions on this podcast? Um... Yeah, the stretch. I think it looks fucking amazing. All I, right. I wasn't expecting a whole lot when I heard, you know, Rogue One, we're going to do these spin off movies of Star Wars. I thought, eh, it would be a bit of a money grab. Could get a little lazy, a little CGI heavy, you know, a little cheap. They might skimp out on the budget. I just had a lot of negative connotations going into it, but the trailer looks fucking amazing. Big epic scale, all practical effects. Costumes look amazing. Sets look amazing. My boy Ben Mendelsohn in that swag suit, fucking swag white cape was balling out there in the galaxy far, far away. Felicity Jones looked pretty fire in that like rebel suit, that black suit. You're like disguise. And the last shot just got me so hyped that like something about the sets are just beautiful. Like that set she was in that black shiny like tunnel. Probably the Death Star, I'm guessing. Probably, maybe. If you think about maybe it, maybe not. We don't yeah, know. I, I, wanna, I just want to jump in. Like I, I love this trailer. I again, just like you, I didn't, ex- I wasn't expecting anything. It was great to see all those characters, and we still haven't seen like Riz Ahmed's character. We haven't seen like Diego Luna talk. We we saw, we saw Diego. No, we saw Diego Luna. Yeah, we didn't see him we didn't talk. See him talk. Yeah. We didn't I thought see he was talk. Pummeled, but... <laughs> he, he seems like he has a big part, but they kind of like held back 
on showing some of him. We saw Donnie Yen use a staff like to <laughs> beat some stormtroopers. Well, we saw him which beat is some stormtroopers. Which is interesting. I want, yeah, I'm still on the fence about Donnie Yen. But um, Forrest Whitaker looked great. Um, Sounds great, too. Yeah, great voice. Yeah. Sounds like, looks like a bounty hunter type guy. Oh, it looks like the real some true. shit, basically. But uh, yeah, overall, I really enjoy it. I love the visuals. I love how it's like a war film. Yeah. I'm in. I'm in. Strong story point, too. You know, like we already know. We know about the plans. We knew about that going into, into four. And yeah. they're making the, like, the movie about. Like, this is a movie that, like, the idea to me is not a money grab. Like, this like this is actually, like, movie worthy. It's a story worth telling. Yeah. That's fair, actually. Yeah. That's fair. That's not like something loose where they're, they're, they're literally grabbing. There's, like, there's a story here. Yeah, because it's mentioned in episode four that, like, a lot of. Bothans. Bothans died to get the plans or whatever. I was going to say Both, uh, Bothkins. I was going to say Mothras. <laughs> I don't even know Bothans that word. Died. Mothras. So it's something that's been like alluded to in the Star Wars like lore, um, but like nothing's really like fleshed out and known and known about it. It's not like... I'm not super pumped for the Han Solo movie because I don't really think we need a Han Solo movie. Okay. I'd rather get another story like this. But the Han Solo movie, like nothing's really been alluded about his past besides like the Parsec thing. I'm just like I don't really. I don't think, we're, 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 gonna we're gonna see that. We're gonna see the Kessel Run. Yeah. Also, how he won the <laughs> the Million Falcon and stuff like that too, though, right? Him and Lando in the past, like obviously, like that could be cool, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. If they show more, him and Chewie meet, like this is kind of True. besides the point. If right, they right. show Millennium, if they show more Millennium Falcon, I'll be in. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. I'd rather see more of like characters I don't know and stuff. Like mm-hmm. I'm super excited for this movie. Yeah. This is great. I thought for sure they'd be skimping on the budget too. Like I thought I'd be like a little bit more okay. like 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 CGI heavy. So I'm not crazy. Right? No, this looks like a it's huge lifted from movie. the same sets of The Force Awakens. That's yeah. what I wanted to say. I don't want people to think I'm crazy. No. I don't know if I can say it looks as good as Force Awakens, but yeah, it looks like. It might why be wouldn't a... it? Why wouldn't they want it to be right? Right, but did you think that they definitely would? Like I, I, I was very skeptical. I don't know what I was expecting. This is a honest. great way to expand the universe. I yeah. think fantastic way to do it. Yeah, they're doing everything the right way. Looks like, phenomenal. Kudos to Disney. Great cast. I got in the in the um, uh, Star Destroyers. That's the right name. Yeah. ATSTs. Yeah, no, Star the, the Star Destroyer. Oh, it looks the fantastic. It looks oh, okay. like it was from the. It looks like a practical set. It looks like a practical set. Like a practical set. Monitor, monitor. Yeah, model. Like that CGI. They've done it in a style that reflects Star Wars Blood. from seventy seven, right? It looks like a model, but it's yeah. not probably. It's probably a CGI, but it made it look like it did back in like. That's what I'm saying. Stuff like that. Yeah, and like you're saying, Ty, like, the eight. Are they ATSTs? That That's right. ATATs. They're ATATs. Yeah. Okay. ATAT. They look like a version. Those tiny ones. Oh, okay. I was I was talking about the tiny ones, like the ones with the two legs. Yeah. Those are ATSTs, right? ATSTs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I saw it because we saw that one, and that one looked. We amazing. saw the big one too. Yeah. Well, yeah. Those looked... shooting up people running across like a fucking like desert or something. <laughs> Wicked. Or like a... It just it seems <sighs> like the it's just the way they they do the lighting and mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. It's like kind of kind of like how the Lego movie like it, they look like Legos. Yeah, like moving, but it's CG, but it's actually all CG. Mm. But like the way they shot the lighting, it looks yeah. like miniature like Lego people moving. Like just, that's just because yeah. of the lighting. Cool. The way they shot the lighting of the CG in in this trailer, like it looks like sets. Reminding me of not. TV, like they bring JJ Abrams in, like on TV, how you bring in the big director to do the pilot, and then everyone else kind of follows that tone. Takes care of yeah. That's what this reminded me of. Like JJ Abrams set the tone with the practical effects and just the big budget tone. epic kind of tone and yeah. this is like like you said it feels like they shot it on the same sets you know what I mean not that it is going to be light and fun it looks a little bit darker it and does prettier. look quite a bit darker you still haven't seen Mads Mikkelsen's character oh, get yeah, high. plus who's that guy that. in the cloak maybe we did see Mads Mikkelsen maybe that's him the black cloak. is it Vader maybe it's Vader maybe it's Vader it's not the Emperor but Ty what do you think about this trailer very hyped for but I got a question though really do we think like, I've, I've read this Rumors on the internet. Oh God! You know, fake sweaty story. Here I mean, we go. What do we think of Fel- Felicity Jones? <laughs> I knew it. Being Daisy Ridley's mom. No. No. Huh? Uh, what do we think? Look, Ty. Fellas, let me uh-huh. let me level with you here. This thing's sitting on a preemptive five bang right now. <laughs> <laughs> and if they if that's the twist, it's a zero. What? Yep. I don't think they need to connect the stories like that. No, but I... Stop shrinking the universe. Like I definitely see that. I do, would do see... Like, could you see a bit of a resemblance there? Like, kind like of... Like, both white females, yes. So, yes. It's totally possible. They do look alike. Oh, well. 
admit, but I think I think it's fans reaching. I I don't. I hope not. Because I don't want not everyone has to be related to everyone. They want to make this massive Star Wars universe a five character universe. Yeah, that's everyone. No, I'm not saying I'm not saying I want. I'm just I'm, I want your opinions. What do we, we, well, we think? No, I mean I it's kind of not. obvious that Daisy Ridley is related to someone important. Like, yeah, she has to be in Rogue One. So no, no, it's in Rogue One. Rogue One. In the I'm just saying Daisy, Obviously, like yeah. Ray in general. And that's enough. I don't need. But okay. you're eventually going to find out who her parents are, and they're obviously going to be important. Oh, God. Like, right? Oh, God. Scott, you're making me believe that this rumor could be true. I don't think it's true. I don't, think it, I don't necessarily think uh, it's Felicity Jones' character. That's what he gets his victory. Could but. Be. What if Eowyn McGregor makes a cameo as Obi Wan? Totally down, and they hook up, and then I'm tired. I'm, 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 Okay, Felicity Jones gets it on with them. They part ways. Because my my favorite prevail like, <laughs> my favorite pre- uh, prevailing theory is that Ray is a is Obi Wan. Yeah, shout out to Jake McCandle. He's is a, is been a dead set on that. Yeah. Ray, Kenobi. I can see her being a Kenobi. That'd be great. And then you have a Skywalker training a, a Kenobi. That's my favorite theory. Wow. So it'd be cool if you and popped up in this. And what then would you guys solo do? Solo Obi Wan movie. Sick. Jake my McCandle's dream. dream. Yeah. And Tim's dream. Solo Obi Wan movie. Wait. So then phenomenal. Felicity Jones would. Join up with uh, Obi Wan, basically yeah. in the Obi Wan movie. movie. We, oh fuck! <laughs> huh? How long before We're connecting New dots. Hope does this take, though? Because in New Hope, Obi Wan's like <laughs> sixty. It's, it's gonna be like it's right like, before. It's oh, like yeah. the same year. Right? So that one doesn't, doesn't match up then. Damn yeah, because they got the plans, and then they immediately like launched the attack on the Death Star, right? Yeah, because I've been pitching this to people that don't know what it is. I was like. We're gonna see why Vader is so cheesed at the beginning of A New Hope. There's a re- like when he marches in, he's pissed. Where are the plans? Right. Yeah. This is basically filling us in as to why he's mad. So therefore, it's gonna end right before A New you think Hope. The gonna end with the beginning with the beginning of New Hope, where that hope ship gets so. taken in. That would be amazing. That'd be cool. Wow. Scotty. This is going to be work as a pro mind. I'm just, I'm just I'm I'm trying, trying, to, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm thinking about these dots here that are connecting. Did, I'm just, we, did we blow your mind some? A little bit. A little bit. Are you up, up real blown, Scott? Wow. I, yes. That's our uh, After Dark special. Yes. <laughs> it's a video. I mean, if they do end with the beginning of New Hope, like, it's kind of interesting, like, because obviously all these characters we've just seen in this trailer that are in Rogue One like mm-hmm. aren't in A New Hope basically besides like Mon Mothma's in like episode 6 and she looks great like she looks the same yeah they, they got like, the great casting actors. yeah but like everyone else doesn't exist in those movies it's like what what's gonna happen to these characters <laughs> right they all go and die <laughs> they all go and die like going to witness protection boom simple so uh yeah we'll see yeah but overall it looks fantastic to me like I'm in. I'm, I was skeptical. I'm all the way in. Preemptive five. Yeah. <laughs> Can only go higher. At this point. <laughs> Just like the Men in Black Jump Street crossover. Wow. Anything else you guys want to mention about the Rogue One trailer or? Do you, uh, one more quick thing. Did you guys? I, I heard speculation of this. I cannot confirm it myself. You guys hear any Darth Vader breath in there? No. no I, I didn't catch it. I heard scrubs on the internet trying to say it was like like when they fade out to the Rogue One title card at the end, no. you hear like shh. Bullshit. If they wanted Darth Vader's <laughs> voice, it would have been pretty obvious. Yeah. You know, why why have it like a... There'd like be a, a lot f- more out there than yeah. just theories. Who was the like, cloaked guy we saw from behind? Who do you guys think that was? I don't know. Uh, it's gotta be Mad. Like, I'm thinking it's gotta be Mad. Mads Mikkelsen? Yeah. Uh, could be anyone. Yeah, but who like who would it be though? Like, I think it's Mads Mikkelsen. Mm-hmm. I would have said Vader, but Jake McCandle informed me he does not have a hood. So no, if it was Vader, he'd have the Vader? he'd see the Chrome Dome. I'm sorry, but Anakin had lots of hoods going on in Episode Three. This is this is like twenty years after that. I realize that, but you don't think he'd wear a hood? He could have no, swapped out. But well, he's saying. He's got the helmet. In 4, 5, and 6, Vader's costume never had a hood. Right. You're saying it's It's possible that Vader's wearing a hood because Anakin wore lots of hoods. Yeah, before he had a hat on. Yeah. Before he had the permanent hat. <laughs> Maybe hat? <it's> not... <laughs> <laughs> before he threw that cap on. Bit, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's a little bit more than a hat. Yeah. 
But Some would call it a space hat. I, I don't guess. think that necessarily. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think the fact that. Um, that doesn't confirm. Vader, yeah, I don't think that confirms anything. I don't think that's definitive. If he was wearing a, a, a hood, you'd see like weird shapes flying out from the sides of the. No, you wouldn't. I, I, well, just, I do not think it's Vader. There is a scene all. in. Might be a new hope. I don't remember when Vader's out of the armor and he gets the armor closed in on him. He could have been walking around with the hood up, no armor. Right. Totally. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. So point exactly. is, get fucking hyped, boys. Oh, I'm pretty hyped for it. Pretty hyped. Six out of five from all of us, preemptively. All right, let's move on to the next news topic, which is the latest Suicide Squad trailer that we actually just watched while and actually just was just released as we uh, uh, were recording this. So let's get into the latest Suicide Squad trailer that just dropped, guys. What are our initial reactions? <laughs> wow. Wow. All new footage. Yes, a lot of new footage. Completely new footage. It's a ballroom blitz. Yeah, Apparently. they're going like, again. Like they're, I think they're, I think they're trying to win me over by playing classic rock songs. Yeah, DC is on a mission <laughs> to tra- win the heart of Tyler Swift, <laughs> and they're trying yes. hard. They're trying very hard. <laughs> Actually, in a like they kind of are. <laughs> they like, not you specifically, but yeah. your type. The ties of the world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which not not an easy We're bunch fun. to please. Come on, we, we can have fun, guys. We're not so dark. We don't. It's not the like. Forget about Iron Man. Thanks, we. Man. We can still have it's fun, It's like Deadpool. Guys. We're like Deadpool. We're funny. Yeah. We play the rock songs. We're not that serious, you know? Yeah. Everyone said BDS was so serious. <laughs> I wonder if, I wonder how much, like, they were doing reshoots. Like, I wonder if they use any of that footage in this trailer. <laughs> you have to wonder. I'm curious. Like, they do a lot quickly? of people were saying that they used all the jokes in Suicide Squad in the trailer. However. Did they reshoot more jokes and then use those jokes in this trailer? In the last week. <laughs> I did a really good point was that... They mentioned that they were doing re- reshoots like a few days after uh, Batman v Superman came uh, came out. It takes weeks and weeks to like plan, mm. get actors back together, get costumes, get the sets back together, get filming locations. You no, know, obviously they didn't. But so it wasn't quite reactionary. But they're probably like, the truth is somewhere in the middle. But yeah, they all, there's always I mean, reshoots in these movies. BBC yeah. like BVS was coming. Like a couple months ahead, of, like ahead of like ahead of time, they're like, "This movie's pretty dark, pretty serious, not many jokes." They're probably like, "We should change this up." Like, remember? Well, I'm sure they were hearing that people weren't liking how yeah. grim it was prior to it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, the yeah. reviews a few weeks before was like, "Hey, it's not great." Well, what did Jai Courtney say? Jai Courtney went on uh, in court to say that it wasn't they were doing more jokes; it was that they were refilming some action Ty, don't scenes. Don't be so naive. And, damage control. And, DC damage control is what they fucking stand for, man. Wake up, Ruthless. man after my own heart. <laughs> what did you think of the trailer, then, Adam? First of all, I was very shocked to see that it had come out. <laughs> I was not expecting another trailer so soon. Anyway, I I I liked what I saw a lot. It looks really good. It looks really fun, but I was kind of like distracted by like the up tempo, like fun. And, like, the humor and the music and the neon colors because of all these reports we're hearing that, again, DC Damage Control is trying to, like, make up for the grimness of BBS, right? Yeah. So, I just, I'm worried that they're baiting everyone in with this, like, crazy Guardians of the Galaxy vibe and we're going to get, like, a super dark, grim movie. Well, it's the, what they're showing is they're showing us like these fun, upbeat songs, but like a lot of the scenes that are like in this montage are not fun, happy scenes. Again, I think people are being glamored. Yeah, exactly what you said. They're being glamored by the upbeat yeah. tone and music. If you played yeah. that on, if, if you could somehow like mute just the music from that, what they're saying isn't really even funny. If you were to show like what's this? What's the song that they're the credence from Green Room that, that we do, that we keep yeah. seeing? Bad Moon Rising. Bad Moon Rising. If they played this during that montage, I'll do one better. The Bee Gees song from the original trailer. They slowed that down. Yeah. And did that look funny to anyone? No. No. <laughs> Ruthless. Again, I, it looks good. Drawing a wool over my eyes. But I, I see it. You see, I'm not yeah. falling for it. I think it looks good, but I don't think it's going to be this wacky Guardians of the Galaxy experience that they're trying to sell it as. Yeah, yeah. I do wonder about the marketing campaign and if it is setting unrealistic expectations for what we're going to get in the mm-hmm. final result. Kind of similar to like, oh, what are the movies like that? Uh, Edge of Tomorrow was similar to like to that. Also, the um, flip though, I'd say. 
After Tomorrow looked super dark and like serious, but I'd say it was fun. Yeah, I don't necessarily mean like in a bad way. Yeah, yeah. But um, and also like Dread, for example, like same thing. Mm-hmm. Like I wonder if it if it will fall into that category there. But Tim, what do you think? I agree with everything that's been said. Good. Okay. Also, it's about time. I feel like this Thank trailer you. was just trying to rip off its own trailer from last time. <laughs> <laughs> Self yeah, parody. Somehow it's they can do that. Self parody. Similar. Like, it was weird because they, <laughs> first they did like three different songs this time. It would have been better they if they did, just did they? the ball, the, the bar and blitz. Yeah, that makes made, like way more sense. Just do that for the whole trailer. But fun. yeah, it just seemed like more, not more of the same. It was more of the same. It was more of the di- it was more of different, but more of yeah. the same. Literally um, more of the same. So Batman shows up as well. Yeah, CGI jumping looking. off a bridge, looking very CGI. <laughs> I can see why Ben Affleck was quote unquote uncredited. <laughs> barely actually shows up in it. He's actually not even in it. He's literally just riding a stunt man on top of a. I car. think that's what it is because that looks like it's part of that same scene. Like that car drives off the bridge, he goes in after it. I think it's just all one shot, probably. Right? One so scene. We... But come on, that's kind of cool. It's pretty cool. Batman chasing Joker off a bridge into the water. Got hype. Cool. I, I I do like how which they obviously were going to address in the movie, but the whole reason for like the Suicide Squad like name. Mm-hmm. Like, if they go off the rails in any way, like, they're dead, basically. They ki- they'll kill them. I love That's that. That's why they're called the Suicide Squad. Literally quote yeah. them and throw them under the bus. Yeah. And I like that they address that, but obviously we would have got that in the movie. It's just... I, like, personally, myself, like, I like this trailer, but I like the first one much more. Yeah. The Queen one, or...? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, me too. I think the Queen one's cut a lot better. Oh, way better. Oh, way one better. One of the best cut trailers I've ever seen. Yeah. That's fair. So... After watching this, um, it's nice to see this new footage and see some more, a little bit more Joker and everything, and see some Batman. But see some Margot Robbie. I like the first trailer better. Oh, you see, see some, some more Margot, Margot Robbie. Oof. Oh, embargo. Robbie. But I'm excited for this movie. <laughs> I think it'll be what I, what I'm expecting. DC's best, probably. Well, they have an amazing non- resume. So. The bar is set pretty high. Best so far. of the DCEU. I mean, I mean, this won't be like Dark Knight good, but DCEU. DCU. Yeah, I think it'll uh, ultimately. DCSU. I think it'll wash the bad taste the of BBS away. DQ. <laughs> Some might say. Nice. Wow. Anything else you guys want to add? Trademark to McGavin. I did like. I Got while money. I'm praying they learn their BBS lesson and they seem to be cutting away from the money shots rather than just showing them. Like we see Deadshot trying to. I was going to say trying to fire up Diablo. No pun intended. Trying to get them all you know riled up and everything. And obviously he does something, and then they don't show it. If this was Batman v Superman, he would fire him up, and then they would show everything that he does. Yeah, the rest of the movie. As a result, or whatever, yeah. yeah. He obviously goes, like, full Inferno or something. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I'm hoping they learn their lesson. Because, right, like, you could tell they were they were holding back. That's what I'm trying to say. They were yeah. saving the... Yeah, like, we haven't seen, er- like, everything. Yeah, it feels like... It feels like, like Joker, we still haven't seen a... Like a long look at Joker. You've seen a right? handful of Joker, but nothing. Glimpses, which yeah. is perfect. That's what you want. Yeah. Like that car chase scene, like we know that's going to be a pretty, like that. Like we got Margot Robbie and the Joker together in this car. We like their relationship, but we don't know what's going on yet. But we know that that car chase is going to be very important. We know it's going to be intense, but they've shown us next to nothing, right. which is great. It might be important. I don't know. It like might that's, not be. I feel I'm this, torn. Do you guys think that's the end or the beginning? Of so the that's the beginning. I think the yeah. end is them in the no, bar serving the drinks. drinks. That's my Ooh, guess. Last like scene. the shawarma kind of? Yeah. Oh, okay. Ooh, my Again, guess. classic like, Marvel. It can't be the beginning because obviously like she's not... Is she Harley Quinn in the beginning? Of the I, movie? Like, oh. Could be a flashback in the middle. See, this is good because Batman v Superman trailer, <laughs> you could be like, yep, that's beginning, that's middle, that's end. Yes. This is like... <laughs> makes sense. Like, I'm know. not sure where, like, where, like, where these scenes take place. This is what you want to be doing, conversing. Yeah. You don't want to be like, oh, that's Speculating. the movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that's the movie. Thanks for letting me know. Speculate, I think, squad. I think this 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 car chase is gonna be closer to the end. That's right. that's just. Me. I know none of you guys asked, well, but let's that's hope my you're closer <laughs> yeah. to your end. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Fuck me. All right, let's let's move on then into uh, something that Tyler will surely love to discuss. What's that? And that is oh, the latest uh, poster from Kingsman: The Golden Circle, tweeted by Mr. Taron Edgerton. Yes. You want to fill us in, Tyler, as far as the specifics? In this poster, you uh, does anyone have a picture of the poster up here? I and I, I do not have it. Is it no, Spoiler alert. 
for I mean, the first Kingsman. Should we get that out of the way? Spoil the first one or just allude to the first one? You know what? Let's. I'm going. I'm going to spoil the first one. If you haven't oh, seen fuck. it, you're you're a fucking moron. Like, <laughs> it's it's just it's, Ty's favorite movie of all time. It's up there. It's definitely in my top five. Try so, not to flat out say it. Just try to okay. dance around it a bit. Okay, they'll know what you're talking about uh, if they've seen it. In in the first movie, something very drastic happens. To a uh, certain character. To a certain character. Tim's doppelganger. Yes. Um, <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> um, something very drastic happens and takes a, a very big turn in the uh, in the first movie. Something divisive. Yeah. And so, in this, the first one, one of the uh, one of the first posters we've seen from the sequel. Is that nothing? Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> what does it say? What does it say on the post? It says, I'm trying to pull the trip. It the says English the time. circumstances Speaking. of my death have been greatly oh, exaggerated. 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 And it's just a, which is a, it's a quote get, from a book. Um, yeah, it's from Mark Twain. Mark Twain, yeah. 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 So, well, it wasn't a, yeah, it wasn't from a book. It was literally there was in the news that he died. Oh, yeah. He, yes. that was from that was he, he, he responded by posting something in the newspaper or something. Came out and said like, the reports of my death have been greatly exaggerated. Yeah. It's very interesting. Like, it's like real, like, it's like real. Yeah. But anyways, it's besides the point. Because throughout the first movie, you know, like the, like those newspaper clippings pay like have a pretty big part in what the Kingsmen are like. You know, there's, they do all these things, but you know, they don't mean anything, right? It, it's all I, I I don't want to get into specifics because it's just so amazing. Anyways, the newspapers, the newspaper clippings are are, are uh, a part of the first movie, and. This is alluding to something pretty big. Are you excited about that? I am very excited about it. In the first one, I wasn't a huge fan of what happened. But I see why it had to happen. Wasn't a huge fan of it. But, if this means the return of a main character, I'm very excited. Interested to see how or, and if they do it. How they, how, how they would do that. Because it, it was pretty... Uh, it seemed pretty definitive. definitive. Pretty cut and dry. <laughs> Shout out to Christian Harloff lighter movie talk okay he was uh theorizing that this is Taron Edgerton's character and Halle Berry's character are trying to use this as propaganda to scare the U.S. version of the Kingsman okay from the movie. How, how would you feel about that if that's true I'm gonna be very upset like it's like what it's implying isn't real yeah this is like Taron Edgerton has written this you guys, are you guys following me? Yeah, yeah. 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 I'll they're be very upset like, if that's true. I could true. see that. That does seem very misleading. And they're saying that would be really annoying. That would be very annoying. Like I would be very bait. upset. It'd be like a bait and switch for the fans. Yeah. There'd be riots. Yeah. Oh, I would burn shit to the ground. There does seem to be a positive reaction to this. Yeah. Like people want that <laughs> speculated to If they happen. get the rug pulled out from under them, they're, well, sweetie, you're the biggest fan on earth. Would you be angry at I that? I would be very angry. There you go. I would light shit on fire. Uh, didn't give a fuck about the first movie. Don't give a fuck about the poster. That's my take, Scott. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm shocked. You're lying. I'm not lying. I wish I was lying just to fuck with you, but I'm not. I'm so sorry. I don't care. About the movie. You didn't give a movie. shit. You didn't like the first movie. I, it's like a three out of five. I don't care about it. Wow, I didn't realize you had you held it. In how has this never esteem. come up? Like, how has this never come up before? I've mentioned it, but I've been always too scared to tell you to your face because I don't want you to kill me. I might actually kill you. Like, this is what's going to happen next. Especially after what you rated Hardcore Henry. Oh yeah, Lo- Hardcore Henry's a five, and Kingsman's a three on our Google. You're delusional. That's fucked. That's so fucked. It's like your opinion, man. <laughs> is that right, Scott? That's yeah, right. yeah. It's like you know your opinion, man. Um, Scott, come on! What do you think? Yeah, I think it. it I think it. W- if what's speculated is true, I'm. I'm looking forward to that. Definitely. But uh, we'll see. Gripping, gripping. Halle stuff. Berry. Ha- Halle Berry scares me. In the sequel. That's she hasn't done well. much. Hasn't lately. done much in a while. <laughs> yeah. Julianne Moore, Oscar winner. Julianne Moore. Uh, you know what? Um. Seventh Son. Remember that villain role? We try not to remember that. Julianne Moore is good, but sometimes she does phone it in. Yeah. Yes, she does. <laughs> I'm hoping that's not the case with this. Matthew Vaughn's first ever sequel. 
It should, I'm sure it'll be good. Yeah. I'll see it. Maybe. All right. Tim? <laughs> what? Oh. Um, <laughs> you you were you did enjoy the first one. This it is on my top ten yeah. of last year. Correct. Thank you. I'm very excited. Good. Okay. You're, yeah. So if this is if this turns out to be true, would you be? I'd be ecstatic. Thank you. Okay. Fuck you, Adam. All right. Awesome. Thank we're you. all looking forward to it, right, Adam? Okay. Can Moving wait. on. <laughs> we have one more trailer, and that is for a movie by the name of Swiss Army Man, starring Paul Dano and Daniel Radcliffe. What are you guys' thoughts? Let me start with, uh, who do you want to start with today? Okay. I'm going to start today. Oh, Russian Roulette, nice. Pick this movie phone. seems very hard to pin down. Like, it's like, what's going on in this movie? The tone seems pretty, like, humorous. Like, it seems like there's going to be a lot of funny moments. But it seems like it also has, like, a heart in it. Yeah, there's something deep and in this. And I feel like I would really enjoy this movie after seeing this trailer. Because I didn't know what to expect. All I've heard, like you guys, it's like the farting, like dead person, like movie, like yeah, farting corpse, is corpse, how sorry, I was the cool. farting corpse movie, <laughs> which is like a weird description for That's a movie. All we've heard so like that's the only thing tying to it. Yeah, literally just a farting corpse. Yeah, that's all we've heard. Um, no more do you need to know. But I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> it looks like really off the wall, like crazy. Like, obviously, Paul Dano's character is, like, hallucinating. And this is, like, all, like, in his, like... Is he? Is he, though? Is he? He must be. Like, this is, like, his... He's creating this person, his persona, I guess, out of this corpse. But it doesn't matter. Like, it's just, like, it just seems like a crazy ride. It seems like it has some heart, and I'm, I'm in. What if, you know, uh... Surreal. What if none of this actually matters? What if, when he hung himself in the trailer he actually died and none of this actually happened that's a distinct possibility mm -hmm. that is a definite consideration yeah the movie looks bizarre yeah very bizarre <laughs> I'm gonna jump in this looks fucking weird but <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm excited to see what happens here you wanna see Paul Dano ride Daniel Radcliffe <clears throat> like a fucking sea dude like a like, like a seahorse, maybe yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like it's <laughs> like, like like you said. Like it looks like there's something there's there is heart in this. Like there is something there's a love aspect to it. Like we don't know if it's between Paul Dano and Daniel Radcliffe, or if it's between Paul Dano and this mysterious woman that we see in the trailer. Probably his girlfriend or his like crush or something. That he seems to be alone on the island with only Paul or with only Daniel Radcliffe. So I'm not sure how she fits into it. But his past life, past life, perhaps. She died, he tries to kill himself, who knows? A lot of possibilities with this. Or he thinks he's not going to die, obviously he's marooned on an island somehow. Yeah. And he, she was probably, I'm guessing, his like love interest from the regular world. Mm -hmm. But, Tim, what are your thoughts on Swiss Army Man? Swiss Army Man feels like a movie I won't see in theaters, and I'll catch months later. And I'll five bang it <laughs> and be its biggest champion. <laughs> Much like me in Earl and the Dying Girl. Right. Uh, this movie looks bizarre, wacky, hilarious, and filled with heart. I'm very excited for it. Yeah. Preemptive five bang. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. I don't know why. I didn't expect, the, I didn't expect Den uh, Daniel Radcliffe to have a speaking part. So I when I saw yeah. it in the trailer, I was like, this movie's going places that I'm very excited for. Yeah. Awesome. Adam. The Farting Corpse movie, huh? <laughs> it's so the much more than that. The flatulent like body. Then that, that one scene where he finds him and then and that's fart it. again. Ever. <laughs> like, there's that one second. Well, Could be wrong. He also pops a boner. I don't know if you guys have heard that. I did read that. So. Daniel uh, I'm in. Popping a boner. We got I'm Harry in. Potter, my childhood hero. That's really sad. He's dead in this movie. <laughs> a fictional character. He's farting. He's popping boners. I can I'm relate. <laughs> my childhood hero has become my adult hero. I'm not. <laughs> you want to be a corpse? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. Loaded farting corpse. It looks insane. 
I don't know, man. I've definitely never... The quote comes up like, we've never seen anything like this. I That's an understatement. <laughs> yeah. You used it several times today. I used it several times today. Uh, <laughs> it, it looks insane. I don't know what to say. It could be amazing. could be the worst thing ever made. I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting. It'll be interesting to see how... Like, obviously, like, Paul Dano's character is, like, he's using Daniel Radcliffe as his, like, Swiss Army knife. Yeah. That's where the name... As his Swiss Army man. As his Swiss Army man, right? Oh, I get it. Yeah. And it's just, it seemed, it was kind of funny how he was, like, using him to, like, chop wood. Yeah. His arm to, like, chop wood and, like, as, like, a machine gun or something. Yeah. It was just bizarre. (laughs) And he's obviously using him as, like, a sea do. Like, he's riding him later. I want to use him as a fucking machine gun. Yeah, that's... (laughs) Spitting shit. You just like said that? Yeah. God damn, I gotta pay attention Bizarre. to the podcast more. It was fucked. You can shoot him into the lake. Like, or like he, he did not shoves say that, that. Yeah, I did. crutch down his throat and then like harpoons it up into the trees. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? This movie's that? fucked. Like, I'm in. Yeah. You know what? I'm in. What was that? Yeah. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. It just seems so off. Like crazy. So off the path. Like you don't know what it's gonna be. <sighs> What's the, what are the reviews like? Do we know? Because it, it was it's been filmed. It was it was at uh, they're Sundance. Good. They're good. They're good. Yeah. Obviously, it's divisive. Like the type of people that would even see this movie to review it are more, gen- like generally like inclined to like towards liking it, like an artsy yeah. weird movie like this. But they're all saying it's like great, and the people that don't like it are gonna know from the first ten minutes and walk out of the theater. So yeah. it's one of those, right? Yeah. But it won the friggin' Best Director Award at Sundance. That's mind-blowing. I didn't know that. Really? Is that what it said? I swear that's what it said on the in the trailer. I think I saw that, yeah. Sundance Director Award or something. Wow. I know The Witch won last year. Wow. Which I love. Wow. Interesting. Very interesting. Who does have two directors? Have they done anything? Uh, yeah, by the looks of it. One guy has ten credits to his name, mostly TV stuff. <laughs> Only TV stuff. Does... Did it say if it won Sundance Director? I don't recall. All right. All right. <laughs> we don't Good know. Good to know. Well, get on that note. If we believe Adam, it won. You guys got to believe me, please. All right. Well, we'll see when it comes out. I'm not sure exactly when it's supposed to release. Um, probably maybe this spring. Could be the fall. I don't think it can be the fall. We'll, we'll see. We'll see when it comes out. But I think that'll do it. For this week's episode of the Up Real Late podcast, you can follow us on Twitter at Up Real Late. You can find us on iTunes at Up Real Late, and you can find me on Letterbox at Up Real Tim. You can find us on Facebook at Up Real Late Podcast, as well as on Instagram at Up Real Late Podcast. You can follow me on Letterbox at Up Real Tie T Y E. You can find me Adam on Twitter at Franey twenty five F R A N E Y two five, and on Instagram. And letterboxed at Upreal Adam. You can follow me, Scott, um, at letterboxed Upreal Scott. And yeah, guys, keep it real. Flip it.